Well, good morning, everybody. Can I uh, start, of course, by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we gather and pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging. Can I thank Cynthia for her wonderful, um, warm introduction? Can I acknowledge the Governor, Ministers? Uh, today, I'm acknowledging friends, one and all. It's absolutely delightful to be here with you. It's impossible to overstate the significance of what we have done here this week. As someone said, if this was the 18th century, there'd be an oil painting to capture the moment. <laughs> we have enshrined in legislation Queensland's path to treaty with its First Nations people, putting right a wrong that has lasted for 200 years, and I think that's worth a round of applause. <laughs> As Minister Crawford notes, it is particularly fitting that it's happening here in Cairns. Before it was renamed after the governor of the time, Cairns was known as Battle Camp. No need to guess why. The awful truth is that in its earliest days, most of Queensland was a battle camp. The more awful truth is how few of us know it. It is widely said that those who forget the mistakes of the past are doomed to repeat them. That is what makes our path to treaty process so important. Generations, including my own, have grown up oblivious to our own history, so the mistakes of the past keep repeating. We were taught about convicts and first settlers, explorers and the Victorian gold rush. The experience of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples was rarely, if ever, mentioned. When it was, it was categorised as the black armband version of history for which modern Australians deserve no blame and therefore need no acknowledgement. Let's not mince words. It whitewashed Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people from the pages of our shared story. With no understanding of where First Nations people have come from, what their story fully entails, it renders them all but invisible to this day. How can you close the gap with something you cannot see? How do you measure that gap without knowing why the chasm is so wide? How do we heal wounds when we do not know how deep? As Martin Luther King said, nothing in the world is more dangerous than sincere ignorance and conscientious stupidity. That is what our path to treaty will address. For the next three years, the five-member truth-telling and healing inquiry will go around our state. It has all the powers of a commission of inquiry but with a non-adversarial approach. Its job is to uncover the truth, as painful and difficult as that will be, because there can be no healing until we all know the truth. None of us should fool ourselves into thinking this will be easy. We need to acknowledge as a state that what we are about to do is incredibly complex. But we also need to acknowledge that complexity exists only because our forebears made it that way. Friends, as I've said publicly on previous occasion, it is baffling to me that Australia was left out of the treaty making process afforded to other colonies like New Zealand, North America and Canada. In those countries, the possession of lands by First Nations people was recognised and was negotiated. There were treaties between the Crown and the peoples of those nations. And as I discovered as a student studying in London, there is evidence of treaties and demands for treaties from both the Australian colonies and the British colonial office. The question is why they were never entered into. We are home to the oldest continuous cultures on this planet. It's estimated the pyramids are 4,500 years old, but our First Nation cultures date back 65,000 years. This is the gift they offer to all Australians and it's something we all should celebrate. Today, I'm pleased to announce that our government is considering a First Nations Cultural Centre for Cairns in the far north. <laughs> a Cairns First Nations Cultural Centre would showcase and celebrate the rich history, unique stories, traditions and cultures of the region's Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples and build on Queensland Government's commitment to elevate First Nation arts. It is envisaged that a First Nations cultural centre in Cairns will act as a hub 
along with the Centre in Brisbane, connecting with First Nations communities across the state, including the network of Indigenous arts centres and other significant sites and locations. And I'm personally proud of this. And if we have to go over to the British Museum and get back <laughs> those artefacts that belong here, I'll personally come with you and do that. They should not be stored at a British museum. They should be here on display for everybody to see and be proud of our history. I want to put on record my acknowledgement of the opposition's support for our treaty legislation and that of the independents and some members of the crossbench. It was a historic sitting this week and one that I'm incredibly proud of. Some things are beyond politics. I also want to say once more that I support recognition of First Nations people in our constitution and a voice to parliament. So do members, every member of my government. As the Uluru Statement from the Heart calls it, a fuller expression of Australia's nationhood. It takes away nothing, but it adds so much. Our treaty process acts in concert with the voice and aims to empower Queensland communities to make decisions on their own. Then at long last, we can stop the centuries of governments doing things to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples and start doing things with them. Every generation is presented with its opportunity to make lasting change. I believe this is ours, to confront the past and build a better future. I once again acknowledge and thank all the eminent people who have carried us this far. What an amazing job they have all done. The consultations, so many people have been involved in this and personally championed by members of my government. And the unknown hundreds of aunties and uncles, cousins and brothers and sisters who have kept their stories alive and brought us to this great moment. We have truly been carried on the shoulders of giants. Finally, I say that passing this legislation is not the end of this journey, but it is a giant step towards it. It is not a gift we bestow. It is a mark of honour and respect long since owed. To finally come together as one united state with mutual respect and absolute shared dignity. This is what we begin to achieve with the passing of this historic legislation. And that starts today. Thank you.